Welcome back to This is Van Color. My name is Mo Amir. This year, British Columbia became the first province in Canada to decriminalize illicit drugs for personal use. But what does this mean for drug users when over 12,000 British Columbians have died as a result of a toxic drug supply since 2016? Here to discuss is the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, or VANDU, represented by Vince Tao and Dave Ham. Vince, Dave, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. Thank you for having us. Thanks Absolutely. Having us, yeah. So I am familiar with Van Du. You were very instrumental in advocating for safe injection sites. You make the headlines quite often with some of your <laughs> protests for safe supply. But for viewers who may not be familiar with your organization, what is the goal or purpose of Van Du? Well, uh, Van Du is a group of users and former users who work to improve the lives of people who use drugs through user-based peer support and education. Okay. And uh, we're committed to increasing the capacity of people who use drugs to live healthy, productive lives. Okay. Right? And we're also committed to ensuring that we have a voice in the community and the creation of policies and programs to design the service. That's, so when, our main, that's our main mission statement, right? Sure. So when we talk about policy and frameworks, one of the big things is moving this idea of drug use from the criminal justice system and into the public health realm. Mm -hmm. So I imagine that decrim was was a pretty big achievement for your organization, something that you look at with a lot of optimism. But I'm curious on the ground, when you talk to drug users, have their lives changed as a result of decriminalization? And I know we're only a few weeks into it, but have you seen anything substantive on the ground? Um, what I've heard from people is that uh, things haven't changed that much because there already was in de facto uh, decrim going on already. Okay. The courts had sort of told people the cops not to, you know, take people's uh, personal supplies mm -hmm. and that uh, you know. As I guess, I don't think it was it was more or less to keep the courts clear more than a harm reduction process, okay. right? Which which in, indeed it does help when you don't get your drugs taken and then you have to go commit crime to get more drugs. Right. Mm -hmm. So basically, cops cannot confiscate your drugs at all. Well, they shouldn't be. Right? They shouldn't. They shouldn't. <laughs> exactly. And they I, still are. Is that? And, and so I think that's the issue with any policy that's decided, you know, kind of higher level yeah. uh, at the government level, is that how it actually leaches down to police behavior, police conduct on the street, we don't know yet, right? And so that's what we're trying to do here at Vandu is one, educate the, the community so they know exactly what's going on with decrim because it's actually quite complicated, mm -hmm. right? As Dave said. Already on the streets, there's a de facto decriminalization uh, practiced by Vancouver police, right? So if they, you know, in the last 10 years or so, uh, if you were found to have some drugs on you, they wouldn't necessarily charge you immediately, but they would confiscate your drugs um, and maybe send you along your way. And uh, maybe the proceeds they thought that were uh, from yeah. drugs. And they, sometimes they put their stuff in the pocket. Uh, but of course, that kind of interaction is very harmful for a drug user, right? Because someone who's, you know, about to do their fix and has that taken away from them, they're still going to have to use their fix anyway. And as Dave said, people right. are going to have to engage in, you know, some activity in order to get those drugs again. And so that's where we see prohibition and these interactions with the police actually continue the cycle of criminalization. Right. right. So I guess what I'm getting at, the day that decriminalization was put into effect, mm -hmm. right. nothing really changed on the ground. Not, not that much. Okay. Right. And of course, as I said earlier, like we're going to have to see how, how this actually plays out on the streets, yeah. because we know from the inside is that decriminalization, the you know, it should be a change in police practice. Right. Uh, but all from what we know right now, is that the average constable, uh, their training on decriminalization, which is a pretty big and kind of complex policy, is only a 45 minute optional video that they can watch. Oh, it's optional. Too. It's optional. optional. It's absolutely right. optional. I mean, right? <laughs> so again, like, you know, <laughs> I'd love to see that video. Oh, we'd love to see the video. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we, you know, we really need to keep eyes on the street. That's what we're trying to do at Van do is educate people and arm people with, you know, knowledge of their rights under decriminalization. Because mm -hmm. uh, as I said, like, we don't know how the police are going to change their tactics, mm -hmm. um, especially knowing that the training is only 45 minutes and optional. And so we want to keep an eye on 
how much this changes the you know the incidence of police interaction and whether or not they're actually following their own policy right, right? because the police have been trained for decades on thinking about you know, drug users as criminals, right? And do you think that's going to change overnight with a policy? With a 45-minute video, maybe. Maybe, because <laughs> <Come on. laughs> they might not even watch it, right? Yeah. They might not even watch the thing. Or yeah. they're like, you know, they put it on and they're like, you know, cooking a meal, like listening to it like a podcast. But right. we actually have no idea how much that's actually going to change their, you know, how they act on the streets. Right? So I guess the big question then is, I think most people recognize that despite the victory laps taken by a lot of politicians, decriminalization is not the end all be all when it comes to the drug crisis, right? Or right. the drug deaths. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about increasing capacity for better health outcomes, what is next? Mm -hmm. What what are you advocating for? Uh, I believe that we're advocating for uh, uh, stepping up the decrim policy into a more effective and actually if, um, realistic uh, uh, amounts that they're uh, talking about. So right now it's 2.5 grams. You think it should be cumulative, okay. cumulative as yeah. well. So right. anything in your pocket right. added together, if it's under 2.5, it's decriminalized. But if it's over, then it's up to the discretion of the police officer to right. decide whether or not they want to charge you. So you'd you. like that volume to be a little higher. Well, yeah, yeah I think and that also there's only four substances exactly. that have been put into this uh, program also, right? It's a three year pro pilot project, right? So yeah. We're hoping that, that that being said, that they will look at it that way and they will be able to see that, that OK, there's some woefully lacking uh, elements that should be involved here. Right. Mm -hmm. When it comes to actually listening to drug users and actually listening to our data that we found is like four point five of each drug separately would be more realistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just as we wrap up here, I'm curious about your ability or the ability of drug users to access safe supply. We, we hear about safe supply and we, I think some people say that, you know, drugs are being handed out like crazy and some people saying, no, it's not available at all. What is the state of safe supply in at least Metro Vancouver or Vancouver City? I think safe supplies that exist right now, it's better than it has been before because before there was nothing. Yeah. Uh, but essentially with the start of COVID, the College of Pharmacists and Ph College of Physicians decided that they would start prescribing uh, what we call dillies on the street, uh, dilaudids. Okay. And that's like a form of safe supply. It's in little tiny pills. Um, they're not, you know, not nearly as strong as the drugs on the street, but it does offer, you know, relief from relief. The, yeah. 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 For people on the street. And so that's been great. Right. Uh, but it's still not enough. Right. Because again, as I said, it's still not as strong as what people are using on the street. And it's just one of the drugs of many, right, that right. Uh, people are using. And so we want to see expanded safe supply. Uh, and hopefully, you know, what we would like, really love to see is the, Gana the Canadian government itself producing, you know, things like cl clean heroin, uh, clean methamphetamines, clean cocaine to be distributed to those that need it most, right? Uh, and that's why, you know, ourselves at Vandu and our partners at the Drug User Liberation Front, we're always pushing, you know, the envelope a bit uh, and trying to demonstrate through our safe supply direct actions that this is absolutely, one, feasible and necessary to save lives. Because whenever we hand out clean, safe heroin, methamphetamines and cocaine onto the street, we check back with people and no one ODs, right? And we've had no ODs yeah. at all, yeah. Well, I know that this safe supply debate will continue and, and your organization will continue to be a strong voice for it. So, yeah. gentlemen, I appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank you. Folks, representing Vandu, the Vancouver Area Network of Drug Users, that was Vince Tao and Dave Ham. Now, after some business, I always thought things were either legal or illegal. So, what does decriminalization even mean? Our favorite criminal defense lawyer will explain as Kyla's court with Kyla Lee is up next.